Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and it is time for me to share another video and challenge in my No Spend November Challenge and Giveaway series. I hope you'll stick around, see what the newest challenge is, and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel and you're going to want to get in on the giveaway, make sure to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I have enjoyed seeing your creations for the first five challenges in my series, and I am hoping that challenge number six is going to be just as inspiring for you. If you haven't been following this series yet, what I'm doing is in November, I am committing myself to not purchasing any new crafty supplies and giving myself challenges to use what I have. I am also hoping that you will join me and be entered to win a fabulous prize. Here's a little bit more about it. During the month of November, I will be putting out challenges for myself and for my subscribers. You can play along on YouTube, on Instagram, or on the brand new Call Me Crafty Owl Facebook page. At the end of the month, I will tally up those entries and one lucky subscriber will win the now sold out Gina K Designs Sparkle and Shine card kit. Don't forget for all of the official rules and details to check out the video linked in the description box below. Also in the description box are the hashtags that you'll need to use for today's challenge on YouTube and on Instagram. Don't forget on Instagram to go ahead and tag me at call me crafty owl. And if you're going to participate on Facebook, make sure in the description of your photo that you add your YouTube username. Challenge number six is a very merry unbirthday, and I would like you to create a new project that celebrates an occasion that is not usually celebrated at this time. So instead of maybe doing a fall or winter holiday, think about a spring or summer one. For my card today, I'm going to create a 4th of July card. In front of me here are most of the supplies that I'll be using, but I'll make sure to let you know later if I add anything else what it is. For my pattern papers, I'm using Simple Stories 6x6 Summer Fresh Paper Pad. I got out a few dies from my collection. I have this United States and it's by Paper Tray Ink. I have a number 4 also by Paper Tray Ink. And I have a couple word dies I got out happy and thank you. I'm not sure who made these because I didn't write it on the back. I am going to do a little embossing and I got out this Cuddlebug Stars embossing folder. If I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I got started on today's card by doing the cutting. The first thing I got out was a piece of off-white cardstock and I cut that in half at five and a half inches. Then from the piece that was left over from that, I cut a piece that was three and three quarters inches tall by five inches wide. Next I brought in the blue floral paper and I cut that to fill the card front at five and a half by four and a quarter. Then I brought in a scrap of clear cardstock and I cut a piece that was going to be big enough to fit behind the opening of my die cut and have some space for me to adhere it to the paper. I wasn't quite sure yet which of the other pattern papers I wanted to use for the smaller dies, so I cut each of those into a 2 inch strip knowing that this would fit any of the dies that I had chosen. Speaking of dies, it's now time to do some die cutting. The first one I'm going to cut is the United States outline, and I centered that toward the top middle of that piece of off-white cardstock. 
Once I have ran this through the die cutter, I brought in that star embossing folder that I showed you earlier and I embossed this piece. I just like the added texture and dimension it gives this when there's quite a lot of white space around it. Before moving on to any more die cutting, I went ahead and put that blue floral piece on the front of my card base. Now I'm gonna bring in the red kind of checked piece of pattern paper and I am going to place that onto the blue piece so when I put the die cut piece on that you see the red instead of the floral through the opening. Next comes that scrap of clear cardstock. You'll see here that some of the Great Lakes would be a little bit flimsy if I just pop this up on the card. So this clear cardstock behind it still allows you to see the red and white paper, but it gives a little bit more sturdiness to the fine points of that die. This could have easily been made into a shaker card, but I decided that I would go with more of a shadow box frame effect for this opening. It is time for my big blue roll of foam tape. You know I love this stuff, and actually in today's video, I'm gonna be using two different widths. The first one is the quarter inch width, and I put this on the more finer or skinnier parts of the cardstock, and then I brought in the 3 8 inch roll and finished the frame, making sure to put a couple added pieces for sturdiness. Once I pulled that release paper, I centered this on the card front. And now it's time for a little more die cutting. Since I wasn't sure which version of the word happy I wanted to use, I cut two of these, the first one from the blue floral and the second one from the second red pattern paper. After cutting those both out and putting them up against the card, I did go ahead and decide to go with the blue floral. Next, I got out the yellow pattern paper and I cut the number four from this. Finally, I got out that thank you die and I'm actually just going to be using the TH so I can turn that four into a fourth. I die cut that from the second red pattern paper just to help it stand out a little bit more since it was a pretty fine font. To get some of these fine die cuts adhered, I brought in my art glitter glue with that fine tip point and added an adhesive to the back of the word happy and placed that below the cutout portion. Once that was in place, I added adhesive to the back of my TH and then I fiddled around with where the four would go and once I figured out a good spot, I placed my TH onto the card base. Now I do want a little bit more dimension on this card. So for the four, I got out some mini Stampin' Up dimensionals, which my daughter always calls mini mentionals. I added a few of those to the back of the four and then popped this up off the card. And here are some close up looks at the finished piece. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I created my card inspired by challenge number six in my series. I can't wait to start seeing your unseasonal creations as well for the sixth challenge of Very Merry Unbirthday. If you enjoyed this video, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next one, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.